Well, obviously I'm a bit different because I grew up in England, so I didn't watch uh, the Socceroos as a youngster because they weren't available or accessible in, in the UK. But uh, I did watch the Australian cricket team a lot <laughs> against England in the Ashes. Um, I think probably my first memory of, of being aware of the Socceroos was the 1997 qualifier against Iran. That made headlines around the world, of course, for the wrong reasons. Um, so that was probably the first time I, I watched a Socceroos game, but uh, the first game I actually watched in the flesh, if you like, uh, was one uh, after I'd just arrived in Australia in 2003, which strangely enough was against England. Uh, January two 2003 at Upton Park, where Socceroos of course famously beat my country at birth, so at the time I was a bit conflicted about that, but uh, yeah, it was uh, that was probably the first one I'd watch from top to tail. Well, we are different because we come from a country that doesn't have football as its number one sport. Uh, so we have to fight very hard for what we get in this country. And, you know, I think people underestimate just how difficult that battle is. And it's ongoing. It's, it's by no means won. So the fact that we've come from you know, what I like to call ground zero, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to what went before, as in the old NSL, or even former generations of the Socceroos, but, you know, what's been built since 2004, 2005, with the advent of the new domestic league, the fact that Australia have qualified for four consecutive World Cups when we hadn't qualified for 32 years prior to that, uh, and that we've built, uh, a football culture essentially, not from scratch because there was a football culture there, but we've certainly made it much more visible to the mainstream and I think that's something worth applauding. Probably only when you see it from foreign eyes uh, that you see just how successful uh, the game has become in this country. Uh, a lot of people I speak to say, wow, you know, they, these clubs, they're only 10 years old and yet they get sometimes crowds of 50, 60,000. That's remarkable. And it is, and we undersell that. Uh, probably my favorite moment from this campaign was the very first goal. Um, Australia were away to Kyrgyzstan, which is not an easy place to reach. Um, the atmosphere was mad. There was only a capacity, I think, of about 20,000, but it seemed like the whole of Bishkek, which was the Kyrgyz capital, uh, wanted a ticket for this game, and they were pouring over the walls like ants. It was a very bumpy pitch. Uh, it was a very passionate atmosphere. I wouldn't say hostile, but it was passionate. And we had this wonderful backdrop of the Alatu mountain range in the, in the background. So it was, it was almost like picture postcard football. And you did worry about whether Australia were gonna uh, fall victim to a giant killing because of Kyrgyzstan were you know, so up for it. This was the biggest game in their history. Uh, and after four minutes, Miller Yedinak took a free kick. And we'd, we'd worried in the pregame about the bumpy pitch because it was, I mean, it was like, um, it was like a ski slalom course, you know? It was really pitted and rotted. And Miller Yedinak uh, hit a free kick into one of those divots and it flew up like, uh, like a spitting cobra, as they'd call them in, uh, in, uh, in cricket, and, and flew into the back of the net. And from that moment on, they were fairly comfortable. They won the game 2-1, despite a late scare. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience and, uh, you know, these are some of the joyous moments that football can give you.